The history of refractive surgery is storied and filled with triumphs, crises, innovation, and continued advancements in vision correction. Our understanding of the cornea, lens, and optical system of the eye has evolved in tandem with technology, allowing for the delivery of reliable and precise outcomes that every year free millions from the burden of contact lenses, spectacles, visual impairment, and even blindness from uncorrected refractive error and cataracts. From RK to PRK to LASIK, SMILE, and the EVO ICL, innovation in refractive surgery continues unbound. However, as good as modern refractive outcomes have become, Surgery, by definition, involves human tissue and a constellation of variables in anatomy and physiology that we have yet to fully understand and control. Although outcomes with laser vision correction are largely terrific, refractive surprises do occur and patients can be left with residual myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. A patient who has undergone PRK, who has adequate residual stromal bet, can undergo a PRK enhancement. A patient who has had LASIK can undergo a LASIK enhancement where the flap is lifted and then an enhancement ablation is performed. Or these patients can also undergo a PRK enhancement. Smile, however, poses a unique situation. How does one enhance the smile patient? Certainly, one can do PRK. This is the least technically challenging method of enhancement and comes with the standard recovery of PRK. Slow, uncomfortable for the patient, and with a risk of variable epithelial hyperplasia. One could do thin flap LASIK. In the United States, the cap of the lenticule is fixed at 120 microns, so making an 80 or 90 micron flap will leave 30 to 40 microns of a stromal tissue bridge between the LASIK flap and where the lenticule was extracted, and upon this, an ablation could be performed. While this can be done, there is a risk of tissue bridge perforation, which can lead to suboptimal visual results. An alternative to thin flap LASIK on the smile cap is thick flap LASIK. Instead of creating a flap within the cap, incorporating the cap in the stroma underlying it. A LASIK flap made at a depth of more than 120 microns will completely bypass the anterior stroma where the lenticule creation and extraction took place. This method, however, requires substantial residual stroma in order to not increase the risk of future ectasia. And finally, perhaps what should be the default standard method of enhancement, cap to flap conversion. By converting the smile cap into a LASIK flap, the surgeon gets the instant visual result in painless recovery of LASIK without the delay and discomfort that is associated with PRK and without the risk of tissue perforation or onerous residual stromal bed requirements of thin and thick flap LASIK enhancements, respectively. Outside of the United States, cap to flap conversion is known as the circle procedure, which is available as proprietary software on the Visumax laser from Carl Zeiss Meditech. However, in the United States, this is not FDA approved and US surgeons do not have access to this software. In keeping with the theme of advancements in refractive surgery, Surgeons were forced to innovate. Here, we demonstrate how to perform the off-label cap-to-flap enhancement using a Visumax 500 femtosecond laser in the United States. The technique is simple once learned and involves a multi-step process of intentionally breaking and re-establishing suction on the cornea several times. The concept is straightforward. Convert the smile cap to a LASIK flap. Because the Visumax laser creates LASIK flaps in an outside-in fashion to allow the patient maximal time of looking at the fixation light, the process of standard LASIK flap creation is manipulated so that the creation of the flap is intentionally stopped just as the edges of the smile cap are passed. A 120 micron LASIK flap is programmed, which correlates to the depth of the cap. Suction is established, and once the creation of the flap has passed the second ring from the outside on the left screen, Suction is intentionally broken by releasing the foot pedal and by clicking the suction button on the joystick. The patient supporting system is then slightly lowered and the proximal end of the vacuum tubing is disinserted from the laser. A thumb, glove, 
or some other object is used to artificially occlude the vacuum port on the laser, which tricks it into thinking that suction has been established. The surgeon engages the joystick to re-establish suction, but nothing is touching the patient's eye. The laser just thinks that it is docked on the cornea. The surgeon then resumes treatment by depressing the foot pedal, and the flap creation continues, this time on thin air. Around the four second mark on the left-hand screen, the artificial suction that was created is broken, and the thumb, glove, or other object are removed from the vacuum port. The vacuum tubing is reattached, the patient supporting system is raised, and the cornea is once again aggravated. Suction is re-established, and the treatment is continued one final time, the last four seconds which are the creation of the side cut of the flap. The process of cap-to-flap conversion is now complete. Notice that there was no femtosecond laser pass across the visual axis. Suction was initially first broken as soon as the outside-end flap creation passed the inner peripheral stroma of the smile cap. This is critical as it will prevent tissue wafers from being created or manipulated during the flap lift. Because the Visimax laser aggravates the cornea and doesn't engage the conjunctiva or sclera, there is little concern for chemosis or edema, and the laser is able to redock and re-establish suction in the exact same place as before, as the cornea temporarily retains memory of the last aggravation. Because the Visimax laser provides audio feedback, it is helpful to inform the patient in advance that they will be hearing the series of audio cues and that rather than imply that something is going wrong, it is in fact going perfectly according to plan. Suction breaks can be nerve-wracking for patients, so setting expectations in advance can make the process smooth and uneventful for both the patient and the surgeon. This is the art of refractive surgery. Finally, the patient is taken to the eczema laser. The LASIK flap is lifted like any other normal LASIK flap, with careful attention given to ensure that the dissector is not tipped anteriorly under the area of the smile incision. The LASIK flap being created can be customized to the surgeon's liking. Some surgeons prefer a nasal or temporal hinge. We prefer a superior hinge, mimicking the standard location of a normal LASIK hinge, and have found no issues with this method. Importantly, a medium or large sized cone needs to be utilized so that the entirety of the cap and the superior incision through which the lenticule was accessed can be incorporated. This off-label cap-to-flap enhancement after primary smile surgery allows the patient to achieve the vision they desire instantly and with pain-free recovery. We hope this video proved informative and that these video demonstrations serve useful to surgeons when performing smile enhancements. The future of refractive surgery is ever bright and there will never be an end to new and innovative techniques. Thank you.